pretties to another uh sam after dark it's a long awaited sam after dark episode that i haven't done i haven't done one in quite a while i think the last one i did was halloween that's been a while so i'm sorry um but anyways um welcome back and actually uh the stories that I'm about to read you, I've done read them once over before, but I recorded a whole like 30 minute video uh, last night and the audio wasn't there. I went to edit it this morning and there was no audio. So uh, we're redoing. So uh, my apologies. My apologies. I think the audio is going to work this time. Hopefully. Um, but anyway. So, welcome back to another Sam After Dark. And I'm just going to be reading you some spooky stories that I found on the internet. Now, last night, my video was real-time reaction to the stories. So, this kind of sucks. Because I'm having to redo and I already know what the stories are. So, I'll try to make it like I did last night. I'll try. And then, when I was recording last night, I had something happen uh, up here. We are renovating up in our upstairs, and uh, yeah, some stuff went down last night, and I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it. And uh, all you can see is my reaction, so I might put that in the reaction part with some music so you can at least see like I was like freaking out so but anyways without further ado let's just get into the spooky stories because this is Sam After Dark so get you something to drink get you a snack get you a blanket turn the lights off For the first story, the first story is called Dear David. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of um, Dear David. It, it, it was a story that circulated the, the internet a few years back, and a lot of people were trying to cover it because um, there was just a lot of spooky twists to it. But uh, yeah, Dear David was written by somebody named Adam. He experienced David so let's just start with that one first and see what you think and if you know about the dear David um, stories just put it in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on it if you haven't heard of dear David well you're fixing to so just listen. <laughs> all right this is called dear David all right dear David is a ghost story that originated on of all places, Twitter, so that's where it was big at, on Twitter. It started in 2017 when illustrator Adam Ellis tweeted about a ghost living in his house. He then followed up with this freaky illustration. I'll insert the illustration somewhere in here and you can see it. This ghost first came to Adam in not one, but two dreams, which you can read about in detail on the internet. You can pull it up, just Google it. Um, Dear David is supposedly a child who was crushed and killed by a shelf. But, okay, so the ghost David uh, is a child and he 
tragically died by a shell. That's a, that's a hard way to go. Um, but the thing is, the ghost did not stay in Adam's dreams. Said ghost began to majorly creep out Adam's very furry, very real cats. So his cat started being affected by this. And so this is an indication to uh, Adam that there's a problem. There's a real big problem. Finally, one night, Adam worked up the courage to go to the peephole of his front door and take a photo to see what his cats were so drawn to. He ended up snapping a pic of some suspicious looking fog, which naturally freaked him out. So he ran to his bed, poured a line of protective salt around his door, and downloaded an app that can record sound in the middle of the night. Mm, so, okay. So just think about this. Uh, you look out the peephole of your, of your door, if you have an apartment, more than likely. Uh, I guess some houses have them, but, uh, and you see fog. Now, I'm gonna be a little bit concerned about that. Um, I'm probably gonna move <laughs> at that point, but that is disturbing. Now, the salt, you know, I don't know why people use some, like, use salt. Like, what is it about salt that repels the spirits? They're like... Ugh, sodium. Sodium is a no-go. Like, who figured that out? Who who figured that out? Who figured, who said, you know, hey, this ghost is attacking me. I'm going to throw this salt down and it's going to send it away. Yeah, it's weird. Really weird. So, the app that he downloaded, it picked up 33 recordings. Then he took another Polaroid, thinking maybe he had accidentally blocked the first one with his finger of his hallway, and the image turned black for literally no reason. That's... That's creepy. That's creepy. Now, to prove he wasn't messing around, he took another set of photos of the hallway from a spot inside his apartment with a regular camera and with his Polaroid camera. And this happened. So I'll insert that. There's no pictures on this website, but I will find them and I will s stick them in here. You'll see them. Unless I just can't find them. <laughs> um, meanwhile, a couple of Adam's dedicated followers brightened the hallway photo and discovered the outline of a person. So, before I continue with reading about Dear David, I'm going to tell you real quick about a situation that I had with seeing an outline of <clears throat> a spirit or ghost or what have you. I know exactly what they're talking about uh, because I saw the outline of a lady, an old lady in an apartment that uh, me and my mom lived in and it it is forever burned in here um, it was really intense so um, I have seen the outline of, of a something and it was scary if you've ever seen anything put that in the comments below because I'm curious to know what all you have seen um, that's just, that's creepy. Anyways, Adam then had another dream in which David dragged him, and get this, he woke up with a bruise on his arm. Around that time, he started getting calls from a no caller ID number over and over again, and when he finally answered, he heard a faint childlike voice say, Hello? At this point, he got a pet cam 
which recorded the rocking chair where he first saw David move on its own. Now, I'm just going to say this. Last night, when I filmed this part, everything was a lot funnier with the first reactions of reading. <laughs> but this was still funny to me, even recording it, even this being a redo. Um, <laughs> if I'm getting a call on my phone from no caller ID and I answer it and, hello? I, no, no, okay? I'm calling the police. If I don't call the police, I don't know. But, uh, that is scary. A kid, like, you answer your phone and you're like, what's up? You know, no caller ID. And then, it's a kid. Like, no, I'm out. I'm out. I don't know about y'all, but I'm out. <laughs> okay. Anyways, and what is it about these chairs that want to move on their own? You know, these spirits love to move a chair. What's up with the chairs? What's up with the rocking chair? Okay. And, and the chairs in general. What's up with them? I don't know. Anyways. Plus, oh, I forgot this part. <laughs> Plus, he saw David outside on his roof. Okay, so we got Adam. We short review. We got Adam experiencing things. Okay, in his apartment. Okay, he is done seeing a mist coming from a peep pole. His cats are acting crazy. He took Polaroids. He's getting weird pictures, outlines of a of a spirit. Um, and now he has uh, <laughs> he has get gotten calls on his phone, no caller ID, over and over again, and it's a child. And uh, now he's seen the rocking chair move by itself. And now we're seeing. David on the roof of his house. I'd say it's time to go. I don't know. That's just me. And next, he discovered a creepy crawl space above his apartment where he found a child's tiny leather shoe. No. That would be an automatic, I'm done. I'm done here. I'm done here. I don't live here anymore. We don't vibe with finding shoes in crawl spaces that are creepy and that we don't know of, and it's not our shoe. We leave. We leave. Now, <laughs> I'm one to talk. I'm one to talk because uh, when we were renovating up here, uh, we took the old floor up and there was stuff under this old floor. There was stuff. We found letters that a soldier wrote. I was like, what? And these are old letters, mind you. This dude was stationed in San Francisco on the USS something. You know, I'll, I'll put pictures in, I'll, I will insert pictures um, probably at the end of the video saying this is what we found on our floor we found it oh and we found a creepy halloween mask it was old it was like it was so old that when we picked it up it just snapped it was i'm telling you we found stuff under the floor so i'm one to talk because we're not leaving we're just continuing we're moving forward in this situation <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's just, that's creepy, okay? Even my situation, that's creepy. When you find something, uh, you know, uh, like, why? Why is it in the crawl space? If David, the ghost, if he died by a shelf, why is his shoe in the crawl space? Who put his shoe up in the crawl space? I don't know. I just want to know. Anyways, oh, and to make matters worse, he set, he set up another camera while he was sleeping, and this happened. Um, I don't see anything. I don't see any pictures. 
or video, but if I find something, I'll insert it. At this point, everyone who had been following along assumed Adam must have been possessed to make the whole story even creepier as if, as if, it's already creepy. He told his followers everything was fine, and he suddenly left his job. Fine is in quotations. He suddenly left his job, so how does this ghost story end? Why, dear David, is being made into a movie, obviously. Are you traumatized yet? That's what the end of this article says. Um, I'm not traumatized by that story, but I'm disturbed. I'm just disturbed. I have questions. Now this, <laughs> this is where my true crime brain wants to start activating. Why is this child's shoe in a crossface? Now I'm gonna turn Nancy Grace. I'm gonna turn my Nancy Grace on. Okay. Why is this child's shoe in a crossface? And why did he die from a shelf? We have questions. That's my Nancy Grace. Um if you if you know you know if you watch her you know i'm just saying okay the next everybody's heard of this story but i'm gonna read it anyway okay because it's creepy and it's adding to the you know the creep factor and this is what amped up stuff up here last night and um uh, it's nothing but a blackness over there understand um i have this light in front of me and this montage colorful light right here but other than that like that's that is all black that's all black over there i can't see nothing but blackness um so yeah it's creepy and these stories light it up so we'll see um now here we go S story number two the amityville haunting Let's go back to the basics for a minute, okay, with the Amityville haunting. Now, this is perhaps the most iconic in real life ghost story ever, and it is, because it's, it's insane what happened to these people, I don't know. Um, the location is 112 Ocean Avenue. The date, 1974. The crime, a man named Butch DeFeo. Now, I thought his name was Ron. I could have swore his name was Ronald DeFeo. Um, but anyways, it's saying Butch here. Um, let me know in the comments if, if you distinctly remember it being Ron. I, I could have swore it was Ron, but you know, I don't know. Anyways, Butch DeFeo killed six members of his family. The following year, the house was sold to George and Kathy Lutz. And that's when things got real, real fast. Obviously. The Lutz claimed they were... <sighs> they gonna throw a word up in here. Veritably, veritably haunted, complete with doors flying off their hinges, slime coming out of the ceiling, and well, ghosts. People, people, if you move into a house where there's been a murder. I don't care how beautiful that house is, don't, don't. I don't care how good of a deal you're getting, don't. Because this is the things that happens. Now, if my doors started flying off their hinges, I'm out, I'm leaving, I'm not, I'm not staying. If, 
if, if that door right there just off the hinge you think I'm staying? no no and I sure as heck ain't gonna call no priest come over here Bob or whoever you know <laughs> Bill <laughs> whatever I'm not calling anyone to come over here and be like I need you to get what it I'm It always started. It started with this one. It started after I read this one. So, what does that tell you? Anyways, just ignore it. I'm not calling a priest to do anything. I'm just leaving. Because, um, slime coming out of your walls. What is this, Ghostbusters? You know, what is Slimer? You know, is this a real ghost? Slimer? Oh, God. People. No, um, that's just, you know, that's messed up. Um, if you have ever been in a haunted house and you've seen um, ugh, slime coming out of a wall, please tell me. Let me know in the comments if this is, uh, happened. Because I think if <laughs> slime was coming out of my walls, I would think there was just something really wrong going on with the house maybe glue um i don't know what glue would be from but uh <laughs> just i don't know man just let me know what you think okay and it continues and it just says just like hella ghosts so just ghosts it's just a bunch a bunch of ghosts in the house they're inf infested the movie was uh really scary like the priest was upstairs and all the flies in the window <laughs> i'm out that's mm -mm. no some other delightful things that happened delightful okay george lutz used to randomly wake up every morning at the exact time of the defeo murders and the Lutz kids started sleeping in the same position that the murder victims' bodies had been found. Now, him waking up at the same time when the murders happened, now that's every single night, you know, almost on the dot of when they were murdered, is weird. Now, the kids, I said this last night, it was, it was, the kids sleeping in the position that the, the victims were found murdered. Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, I think that uh, there is a common sleep position that we all kind of probably have, especially kids, right? And uh, if the victims were just sleeping, you know, in their bed, and then they were killed. They were probably just sleeping in a in a in a in a common position that you sleep in. So I wouldn't call that. Uh, I don't know. I would have had to been there, and obviously I wasn't. Cause I wasn't alive. Um, but if, but if I, it would give perspective if you could see it in person. Okay. Um, obviously I can't do that and I won't do that and uh, wouldn't if I had the chance but uh, I'm just throwing out a theory here that you know kids have a, a common sleeping position and and those kids were probably just asleep in one of those and they were killed so you can't go and say my kid is sleeping just like that kid died I mean it, 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 that's reaching a little bit, but uh, scary nonetheless. So, did any of this stuff actually happen? That's the question. Plenty of people think the Lutz family fabricated the whole thing, and some people have found proof. But according to the Lutz and a lie detector test, it's all true. Okay. I'm going to bring my Nancy Grace back out, okay? 
listen. You can take a lie detector test, okay? But you can pass those very easy. Mm -hmm. um, even the best liar in the world can pass a lie detector test. I'm just saying. Um, those are not reliable. Okay? Um, you could... <laughs> your blood pressure could be up. Like, I'm just saying. Things affect that test. And, uh, yeah, we're not... We're not going by that. We, we just... <sighs> I don't think they made up anything about it. Um, if you have your own opinion about the Amityville and the Lutz and all that, you know, leave it in the comments. I personally don't think that, uh, they was lying. I think I mean, they could have been exaggerating some things, but lying, um, I don't, I don't think they were just completely lying, but needless to say. Okay, on to the next. Now, <laughs> when I was reading, um, when, uh, this website. Um, so this is from cosmopolitan.com. I can link it below in the description box. This is where I'm reading all this from. My first reaction was just, it was everything, okay? Because I didn't know this was going to be in this, I did not know this story was going to be on this site. But, just hold your breath, okay? If I can get it to focus. You girl. You... <sighs> My queen. My queen. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'm being, I'm being crazy. Um... She has a haunted story. Ariana Grande has a, a haunting story. I knew, see, I knew. I knew this is why we're connected. She's, she's my, uh, uh, uh twin. Not physical, obviously. <laughs> Anyways, let's just, moving on, moving on. It's getting crazy. I just, I love her. Okay. Anyways. Um, yes, that is correct. Ariana Grande was haunted by a ghost. Her experience went down in circa 2013 when she visited Stoll Cemetery in Kansas. Now, Colin from the Paranormal Files covered this on his channel. He told about it. Um, if I can find that episode, I'll link it below, and you have to watch it. You have to. Anyways, <laughs> you don't have to watch it, I'm just picking, but, um, if you want to know about Ariana, you will. Okay, it's important. <clears throat> um, but he covered it, and it's a creepy cemetery, I will say, um, but yeah, she, I, 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 when I started reading this last night, I was like, I remember that episode he did, so I'll link it below and you can check it out. But, uh, she visited Stoll Cemetery in Kansas. I've never been there, um, I don't know much about it, so if you guys know about this cemetery or you've ever been, put it in the comments, because I want to know. Um, or if you live near there. If you live there, if you live there near Go there. Take some pictures. I'm curious. But if you're scared, you know, that's fine. But I'm curious. But <laughs> um, this place is so messed up that the Pope refuses to fly over it because its its reputation is to be one of the seven gates to hell. All right, let's talk. Why? Why is this cemetery in Kansas chosen to be one of the seven gates to hell? Where's the other six? I could... 
you know, mm. what? <sighs> That's so weird. But anyways, something must be going down there for people to be like that. Even the Pope. Like, what? I thought he wasn't scared of anything. Don't come for me, Pope. Um, here's Ariana explaining what happened to Complex. So she explained her, this is her, this is her, uh, words right here. I felt this sick, overwhelming feeling of negativity over the whole car and we smelt sulfur, which is the sign of a demon. And there was a fly in the car randomly, which is another sign of a demon. I was like, this is scary. Let's leave. I rolled down the window before we left and, we, and said, we apologize. We didn't mean to disrupt your peace. And then I took a picture and there are three super distinct faces in the picture. They're faces of textbook demons. Um, and they inserted this dog because he's just like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> when she tried to send the photo to her manager the next day, Ariana got an error message that read, this file can't be sent. It's 666 megabytes. Actually? Okay. Eventually, Ari claimed weird things started happening to her, so she deleted the pic. I was hoping I would be able to find that. You know, I'm still going to dig, and if I find it, I'll insert it, but I doubt I'm going to find it because she deleted it. Dang. Weird things like, and here's her words again, I was going to sleep about two weeks ago. I had just gotten off the phone, and as soon as I closed my eyes, I heard this really loud rumble right by my head. When I opened my eyes, it stopped immediately, but when I closed my eyes, it started again with whispers. Every time I closed my eyes, I started seeing these really disturbing images with like red shapes. Then I opened my eyes and got back on the phone and was like, I'm really scared and I don't want to go to bed tonight. And then I scooched over to the left side of my bed because that's where the best service is in my room. <laughs> okay, Ari. 2013, we were struggling with Wi-Fi, I guess, or internet, and or sell your data, whatever. Um, <laughs> when she scooched over to the left side of her bed where she got their best service, um, there was a massive black matter. I don't know what it was. It was like a cloud of something black right next to me. I started crying. I was on the phone like, what do I do? What do I do? And they said, I don't know who they is, tell it to F off. I thought, I am not going to do that. <laughs> it's going to upset it. So I'm just going to chill and not feed into it because all it wants is fear. It feeds on fear. I watched it move to the front of my bed and then I fell asleep on the phone. Um, I woke up and it was gone. The next night my friend Tyler was staying with me. She said she was trying to sleep and her body felt paralyzed almost and she described the exact exact same thing that I saw. So, it's saying, do you believe Ariana? Um, of course. <laughs> Why would she lie? Um, Ariana is, uh, doesn't strike me as a type to want to have attention over ghosts. She's so busy and she's so talented. I think she really experienced this, and I think it was very real to her, and uh, she's very spiritual, so I think I think she experienced something, but let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think she's lying? She's not. Don't even go there. I will, I will, I will come through the camera. Don't call, don't. She's telling the truth. <laughs> Anyways, okay. <laughs> the next story 
is from Reddit. Okay, Reddit usually has really good spooky stories. Um, and this one is called Happy Birthday. This one comes courtesy of Reddit, as I just said, so you know it's gonna be good. By which I mean horrifying. Because Reddit, Reddit, Reddit do be putting out that stuff. Um, <laughs> that, that's a whole nother universe over there. It's almost like Twitter. Um, uh, to me. Reddit is... <laughs> Anyways. Uh, in a nutshell, shortly before a couple moved into a new house, they learned that the previous renter had died. Right in the middle of the living room. It's, okay. Why? Why are you moving in there? I mean, you know... Uh, how you go? Okay. I can't. I wouldn't be able to move into a house where somebody died in the living room. I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of living up in this room. Let me just cuddle up on the couch and read a book and drink my coffee. No one... <laughs> no. No. Um, they decided to go ahead and, and with the move anyway, so they decided to move in anyways. And almost immediately, their two-year-old daughter started talking about ghosts. Mm. This is what they um, describe. She was always telling me that the ghost was in her playhouse in the basement, or that the ghost was on the stairs, or that the ghost was standing in the corner. She never seemed to be afraid of the ghost and considered him to be her friend, so I wasn't all that concerned even if there really was a ghost haunting our house. Um, if he's a nice and helpful ghost, it could certainly be a lot worse. I would often tell the ghost that he was welcome to stay if he wanted to, but he was also welcome to go if that would make him happier. Now, um, she could have been having an imaginary friend, uh, but considering there was a death in the house, an um, imaginary friend I don't think is an option. <laughs> uh, I had an imaginary friend, and um, her name was Chastity, and um, she was, it was really intense. It was an intense relationship, okay situation shit we'll, we'll say because um <laughs> it was so weird my mom had to um make food for her and set a place at the table for her and uh she had to have her when i got a christmas gift she had to have a christmas gift um my brother decided to sit on It cut off on me. It, 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 this camera, or memory card rather, is acting funky. It tells me that it's that it that maximum recording is reached. Yeah, right. You're 128 gigabytes. Give me a break. Ghostesses like to mess with my camera. Mark my word. There'll be something. There'll be something in there in that mic. So listen for. I hope not. I don't look. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying. This is my house, okay? And I don't want things talking in that, in, in this house. Anyways, um, so my brother, before I got rudely cut off, decided to sit on her and caused me to have a complete a, a panic attack. And I went into a a spiral of uh of total uh just devastation because he sat on her and um he hurt her as i put it he, he sat on her jeez so i know that level of uh imaginary friends and stuff like that but 
um, honestly, this girl was not having that experience of an imaginary friend. We all know that. So, the parent continues to say, it sounds finish, right? Wrong. Or the article says this. The kid told her parents that the ghost was on the back deck and it was the ghost's birthday. So she wanted to sing him happy birthday, which nope. No. We're not we're not singing no. The Redditor continued. Once again, I mostly disregarded what she was saying as she is birthday obsessed and has in the past made us sing happy birthday to Mickey Mouse, a bowl of fruit snacks, and the bathroom. So she loves to sing happy birthday. So we sang and we wished the ghost a happy birthday and we went on with our lives. But guys, guess what happened next? Later that day, the Reddit user grew curious and looked up the obituary of the man who died in their living room and to quote directly, it was his birthday. Goodbye. Goodbye, world. That's what that says. It says, goodbye, world. Um, so, they uh, find out that their daughter is actually seeing a ghost. And she wanted to wish it a happy birthday. Um, so, that's creepy. All of this is creepy. You understand? Every story I've read is creepy. There's no other way to explain it, and it's only perfect for Sam After Dark, these stories. They are suitable for this section of this channel. This section. Sam After Dark. That's where you are. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird. Now, uh, last night when I was reading these stories, I looked and saw that there was one called the pancake ghost but then i went down a little bit and i was like okay how long is the pancake and then i come across this miley cyrus hold the phone hold the phone miley cyrus has had a ghost experience i mean the wrecking ball queen herself has had a ghost experience and we're gonna read about it right now again this will be the second time for me so i already know what's going on with all of these now i didn't read the pancake um so i might read the pancake one just to have something new that i haven't read so i can react <laughs> genuinely to it but uh Miley Cyrus haunting. So, nope, it's not just Ariana. Miley also experienced a haunting around 2013 when she was staying at the apartment she owned in London and saw a little boy watching her shower. So, she was in the shower and she saw a little boy uh, watching her take a shower. Mm, that's that's not creepy at all um so she said i thought i had seen a little boy sitting on the sink watching me take a shower so i felt really freaked out i was sitting there the next night and maybe i'm crazy but i could have sworn i could have seen this little boy sitting there on the sink kicking his feet my mom was getting mad that we were looking into it because she thought it was going to scare noah so then my aunt, who we hadn't told about this, comes in and she starts freaking out. She's like, I had no idea what happened, but I left the apartment and I came back and all the doors and windows were open. I locked the apartment. Miley started looking into the history of her building and found out that a man and his son had owned um, it as a bakery back in the ye olden days. So she thinks the son was the little kid who had been watching her. So yes, she moved. She moved out of that place because it was so intense that, uh, I mean, you know, we, we've all had those, uh, <laughs> at least I have. Like you're in the bathroom, you're taking a shower and you like 
You feel like somebody's there. Like, why? Why is that a thing? Psycho Alfred Hitchcock has influenced that fear of trying to be, take a bath and somebody's watching. It's very disturbing. But anyways, moving on. We're going to read this last story and then that will be it. Okay. This last story is called The Pancake Ghost. Now, I didn't read this one last night. I saw Miley Cyrus immediately skimmed over, started reading about her ghost story, and then um, things started happening over there. And I will show you, I'll give you a sneak peek, but things started happening over there and it got creepy real fast, okay? And I was scared and I said, we're done, we're done. And I ended it, Sam After Dark. <laughs> Sam After Dark ended, okay? Here we go. This is called The Pancake Ghost. This one is also from Blessed Reddit. Blessed Reddit. <laughs> it takes place in a home that was built around 1904. The Redditor's brother and his best friend were leaving band practice only to realize they'd forgotten their pancakes inside a to-go container. God, the tragedy. <laughs> and as anyone who loves pancakes knows, that's a very serious issue. Oh, I just said it was a tragedy. It, it, well, it kind of is, but... Anyways, this is one of their um, recounts. So they're, this is their words. So after my brother walks back, he is about to retrieve his food container, and when out of the corner of his eyes, he sees it. A shadowy figure, right as his, right at his peripheral vision. This feeling of dread and uneasiness washed over my brother. We had been taught that if you were in the presence of a spirit or ghost, and you felt a bad vibe, to say a quick prayer or cuss it out. No. I'm just gonna say this <laughs> this this that took all the energy out of me. Don't don't uh don't cuss it out. Don't cuss the spirit out. What is it actually where where you know what are you going to solve cussing it out? Just pray for it. And maybe it'll say you know and skedaddle yeah <laughs> it's not gonna be afraid of you cussing if anything it's gonna find it very entertaining like who do you think you are your words don't scare me i could literally you know make you crap your pants right now <laughs> anyways my brother chose the latter so <sighs> He basically said, hey, I don't have time for this. Get out of here. Well, good for brother. Good for him. Not exactly what I would have done, but whatever. Either way, this guy walked back to his car, feeling the presence of the ghost with him the entire time. He climbed into the driver's side of the truck, putting on his seatbelt and getting ready to pull out of the parking spot directly in front of the house when one of his friends asked, Hey, wait, what about your brother? Isn't he coming with us? My brother answered, um, What do you mean? He went to work early tonight. He is already gone. Do you see his car anywhere? And then, yeah, you guessed it. The next question they asked, So then who was walking behind you when you were leaving the house? And then it says, are you doing okay? Huh? Are you, are you doing okay after that story? Do you, uh, do you think you're going to make it? You might. Anyways, that's the last story I'm going to read tonight for Sam After Dark. 
hope you all had a wonderful time <laughs> with Sam after dark. And uh, I hope some of these stories, um, you know, if you leave out my commentary and you really focus on what the story was about, I hope it was creepy for you. Because just, you know, imagine we're all sitting at a campfire and there's a, a nice little camp, little fire pit going on and we're roasting marshmallows. And these are the kind of stories I'd be telling. And yes, I would be commenting. I would be commenting the way I am right now because it's kind of like um, a mechanism to <laughs> make it lighter the stories so um, I don't get spooked because in reality I'm not with you okay? I'm not myself I'm, I'm sitting here alone in the dark with with one light and this bougie light right here that's my reality and this is my reality to the right You tell me. Would you be able to sit and tell a story with that off to your right and a creepy light in the window? I don't know. And, and all of that reconstruction going on. Um, and it's the quietest place in the house. I, I mean, minus the traffic. Uh, but yeah, so this is what I'm working with. It's like black in front of me, black behind me, black to here, like, and then the stuff we found under the floor. Don't get me started on that. That was, that's, that's for another day. And you know what? I could make a whole video on what we found. See, that's what happened. When I started talking about it. I swear, if I see a hand, if I see a hand, you know, coming out of the... <laughs> Look, I'm not creeping myself. I creeped myself out last night really bad and I had to like cut the camera off and I was like, bye, bye. And then I was out, so I'm not doing that tonight. So, with that being said, um, I'm gonna let you go before that happens. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sam After Dark. And don't forget, stay sweet, stay smart, stay safe. If you're new, hit the subscribe um, and turn on the little bell. So you. <laughs> So you'll know <laughs> when I upload, which is kind of all over the place right now. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but um, you know you're 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 fine. I got plenty of videos. Just go back and and watch all those. Just have a ball, you know. Go back in the past and watch me progress to where I'm at now. It's interesting <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah. Until next time, uh, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Oh, and wait. Be sure to pre-order Mallet 2. Mallet 2 is now out. It's open for pre-orders. Signed DVD copies by Hunting the Dead, a.k.a. Jody Dean, and the whole, well, I don't know about the whole cast, <laughs> but uh, Anthony and Jace and Alicia, uh, like, they'll sign it. They'll sign it. Get you one. Get, get, get the Audis. Get the Audis. And get the DVD and watch it. And then when you watch it, let me know in the comments what you thought. Because your girl, your girl's uh, got a part in that movie and I die really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. Like this, no, I die.
Okay, that's all you need to know. I'm, I'm, I'm out. Okay. And <laughs> come back when you know what that reference is from too. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go. Until next time, as I said, bye. Thank you.